We begin our worship by lighting the Christ candle. Haley will light it for us this morning. We light the Christ candle as, God's, as a reminder of God's constant presence with us. To help us to focus on Him. As Jesus, light of the world, as brighten up every corner of the world and shows us the way and gives us hope. Let us come to God with our call to worship this morning is inspired by Psalm 130. Please join me in the passing boat moment. Out of the depths, I cry out to you, O God. Good morning, Jesus, the bread of God.
who seeks us out and looks upon us with love and compassion. We come before you with our compassion. We are sorry for the times we dealt in. We are sorry that we are so easily overwhelmed by the stuff of life that we sometimes close you out and then doubt that your will exists at all. We acknowledge that we go about our daily routines without caring about you. Yet, you continue to hold us in grace, even when we are hurt both to others and betray our faith. Help us, Lord, to stay close to you, to believe your word, and to live according to your way. Fill us with your spirit, and enable us to walk according to your will. Refresh our mind and renew our heart today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, when we believe has eternal life, this is the very promise of Christ, our Lord Jesus. So sisters and brothers, we can trust Christ, for he is God's revealed truth. God's grace is sufficient and sets us free. We are forgiven people, and our sin is overcome. Thank you. And let's share a sign of peace with one another.
Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. At this the Jews there began to grumble about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me calls them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. This is the living word of God. Oh, 
importance of honest work and generous giving. By working diligently, we can share with those in need, reflecting the self-giving love of Christ. Additionally, Paul urges us to use our words to build others up, offering encouragement and grace. That's a very good verse to remember when we visit. It's Ephesians 4, verse 29. Our speech has the power to edify and strengthen the community, promoting unity and growth. Imagine the impact we can have if every word we spoke was measured by its potential to build up rather than to tear down. Paul concludes this session with a powerful call to forgiveness and love. We are to be kind, compassionate, and forgiving, just as God in Christ has forgiven us. By him, imitating God's love, we create a community where grace and mercy abound, drawing others to the transformative power of the gospel. That sums up the mission of God. So the key word here, forgiveness, is not always easy. We know that, especially when we have been deeply hurt. But it is essential for our own healing and the health of our relationships. When we forgive, we reflect the heart of our Savior, who forgave us at great personal cost. In the reading in John chapter 6, the lectionary reading, I'm preaching plan purposely repeat verse 35, which we had last week, because it is important, and it links to the remaining verse in first verses 41 to 51. So in John 6, 35, Jesus declares himself to be the bread of life, offering eternal substance to those who believe in. This profound statement challenges us to look beyond our physical needs and seek the spiritual nourishment that only Jesus can provide. The crowd struggles to understand Jesus' claim. They question how he can be the one who came down from heaven. That's in our reading today in verses 41 to 42. Jesus emphasized that belief in him is a work of God, drawing people, drawing people to himself. That is in verse 44. Jesus' teaching invites us today to recognize our dependence on him for spiritual substance in a world filled with distractions and temporary satisfactions. Jesus offers us the true bread that nourishes our souls deep in our hearts and gives us eternal life. As we come to him in faith, he fills us with his presence, enabling us to walk in love and live out our calling. This dependence on Jesus requires a conscious effort to prioritize our spiritual lives amidst the busyness of our daily routines. With this theological understanding, Let's dwell deeper into some key themes and how they can apply in our daily lives. Now I have lots of bullet points coming in the next slides. Those who would like to have a copy feel free to email me. Speaking first is speaking the truth in love. Telling truth telling is foundational to building trust within the community. Imagine that. When we are truthful, we honor the dignity of others and reflect the integrity of Christ. It's very important that we do that, especially because the world is watching us. We reflect on that in our Bible study on Friday too. However, truth must always be coupled with love. Truth spoken with our love can be harsh and damaging. While love without truth can be misleading and insincere. So three practical steps we can put in put this teaching into actions. First, reflect before speaking. 
before speaking, consider whether your words are both true and loving. Ask yourself if they will build up the person you are speaking to. Even is the truth, half truth, how can you present it more lovingly? Or with a good intention of loving the person? Second, create safe spaces. Foster environments where people feel safe to speak the truth without fear of judgment or retaliation. This can be in your family, workplace, or within the church community or the organization that you volunteer for. And then encourage honesty. Model modesty uh, and honesty in your own life and encourage others to do the same. Share your own struggles with truth telling and how you are working to improve and inspire others but they are not alone. And secondly, addressing anger constructively. Anger is a natural emotion, but it must be managed properly. Unresolved anger can fester and lead to bitterness and estrangement. I've seen many families who spoke about it. Don't speak to each other. That is sad. So Paul's advice is clear. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. In Bible study on Friday, as I mentioned, we practiced with, yes, we might be okay because we have pride, we come to church, we don't have anger issues. But yes, we reflect on how easily we get frustrated or upset. Right. So three practical steps. Timely resolution. Make it a point to address conflicts and anger as soon as possible. This doesn't mean rushing the process, but rather not allowing issues to linger indefinitely. And seek understanding. When you feel anger or upset, or you feel angry, try to understand the root cause of your anger or frustration and address it constructively. This might involve you having a difficult conversation or seeking help from a mediator or counselor. And third, that's the important that follows, is pray for peace. Bring your anger or frustration to God in prayer. Ask for his guidance in resolving your anger. Or for the peace that surpasses understanding. Sometimes take time to resolve issues. And our God, who can do immeasurably more than what we can ask, might change the people involved or the situation for the better. Oh, it will take longer than today's sermon if you like to ask me how I experienced this. So yes, we can share further in some other time. And third um, thing that we have today is living generously. Generosity is a tangible expression of love. It's how we make that plain heart more beautiful. It involves sharing not only our material resources, but also our time, talents, and energy. One thing I remember that is important in ministry is how well my sermon, because you might not remember next month, next year already, but how you make people feel. People will remember you even years later, how you make them feel. So, practical needs. Identify, identify needs. Be aware of the needs around you, whether it is financial need, a need for companionship, or a need for help with a task. Be ready to offer assistance. Sometimes it can be just showing a new family in town, moving from other country or other state, where to go for fun. And set aside resources. Regularly set aside a portion of your income for charitable giving. Consider also setting aside time each week or each month for volunteer work or acts of service. Trust me, there's a lot of mental health studies that actually boost your own uh, resilience and joy. So Craig and I both set aside 10% of our income for church and missional ministries. This is from the biblical teaching of tithing, for those who haven't heard about this word, this is what it means. 
And I'm sure, um, we also volunteer to help refugees in the asylum seeker whenever we can, a bit less these days because we're so busy. But I'm sure many of us do so too, volunteering. But if you haven't been doing so, yeah, try, bring your type in and see how God honors you back in your app of loving obedience. And practice hospitality. Open your home to others. Hospitality is a powerful way to show love and build community. Invite someone to have a cup of tea, a morning tea, or Bible study. Home groups is like, it's a good thing and best thing to grow community of Christ. Jesus was always practicing hospitality by recognizing the need of others. He never turned anybody away. He welcomed everyone regardless of their background. And over the years, Greg and I have opened our homes for church Bible studies and connect groups, and we're blessed through it. Four, using words to edify. We mentioned our words have immense power. They can uplift and inspire, or they can wound and discourage. Paul urges us to use our words for edification. Again, three practical steps that you can do. Give plenty of encouragement. Make it a habit to speak words of encouragement to those around you. Look for the good in others. Acknowledge it. And constructive criticism. When you need to offer criticism, even for improvement sake, do so in a way that is constructive and aimed at helping the person to grow. And positive reinforcement. Oh, I think this is a lot of, about parenting too. Celebrate the achievements and milestones of others. Let them uh, know their efforts are appreciated and valued. And fifth, imitating God's forgiveness. The core of the gospel. Forgiveness is at the heart of the good news of Jesus Christ. It is a gift we have received and are called to extend to others. We are called for to do so. Forgiveness is not about condoning wrong behavior, but about releasing the hold that anger and bitterness have on our hearts. Again, three practical steps. Self-reflection. Reflect on areas where you need to extend forgiveness. This might be towards others, or even yourself. Second, seek reconciliation. Where possible, seek to reconcile with those you have forgiven. This might involve a conversation, a letter, which I try not to do in my email, because people might read it differently, or another act of restoration. And third is pray for your offenders. Pray for those who have wronged you. Ask God to bless them and to heal your own heart from the hurts. Yes. I think let's take a moment. Just pause a moment and reflect. What areas do you need to extend forgiveness? Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Is there someone that you forgave? Or said you said to yourself you, you have forgiven, but have made no concrete attempt to reconcile? Is there someone who has wronged you that you can pray to God now to bless them and heal your heart? Last and not least. Dependence on Jesus. Recognizing Jesus as the bread of life means acknowledging our need for him every day. This dependence involves regularly uh, engaged with spiritual disciplines that involves Jesus. Yes. Three practical steps. Daily devotion. Set aside time each day for prayer and reading the scripture. Allow this time to be a source of nourishment and guidance. 
that is a free online and printed resource it's called Daily Bread. I think a lot of you know that. So if you don't, search online or speak with me if you would like to subscribe to it. And regular worship. Make worship a priority in your life. Attend church services regularly and engage fully in the worship experience. Yeah, we're very good here. Nobody will know. <laughs> Well, uh, we are worshiping, that's great. Well, we have, I reflected also, we have around 35 people in our current church world. Yeah, we can have completely different 10 to 18 people coming to church some weeks. Maybe finally, some weeks I will see completely different 12 to 18 and to the other week. So it would be wonderful, that's my hope and prayer, that all our church family can get back to the habit coming to the church each week to worship God together. And community worship and fellowship. Surround yourself with fellow believers who can support and encourage you in your walk with Christ, in your journey in life. Participate in small groups, Bible studies, and our community activities. Build your relationship with God and with one another. This is what the corporate world and psychologists are emphasizing church offers what emotional intelligence and support networks are all out. Jesus died for us out of his love for us and he has called you to lean on him daily. Bread of life, our daily bread, and worship in his holy presence on Sabbath day weekly. He has offered you the way of life, the bread of life. What do you say? Not to me, for me. To conclude, brothers and sisters, let us commit to walking in love as Christ loved us. Let us speak the truth, resolve conflicts, live generously, use words to edify, and imitate God's forgiveness. And above all, let us depend on Jesus, the bread of life, for our spiritual substance. By living out these principles, we will reflect the light of Christ in our communities and draw others to the transformative power of his love. And we will be blessed in the process. So God bless you as you walk in love, as Christ loved you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love and grace you have shown us all in Christ Jesus. Help us to walk in love, speak the truth, resolving conflicts, bringing peace, loving others by practicing generous giving, and using our words to be others up. May we depend on you, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and the bread of life. Empower us to reflect your love in our community and draw others to you, living out Christ's love through our actions and relationships. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now let us also respond with a hymn that encapsulates the essence of our sermon today. The words of a new commandment reminds us of Jesus' call to love one another as he has loved us, making it a perfect response to the message that we just heard. We'll say this twice, and let's say as you are able, as we sing together. Number 699, New Commandment.
Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your boundless love and mercy. Trusting in faithfulness and love, we lift our prayers for the church, the world, and all we need. Lord, we pray for your church around the world. Help us to speak the truth in love, to address conflicts with grace, and to tackle poverty in generosity. May our words build up and encourage reflecting your love and bringing justice to all we encounter. We pray for our community, our community and its leaders. As our church council meet later after the service, grant them wisdom, compassion, integrity as they make decisions that affect our lives as your disciples and join you in mission in our local community. Help us to be active participants in our community, promoting unity and understanding. Lord, we lift up those who are struggling with anger, bitterness and unforgiveness. Help them find healing and reconciliation. May your spirit guide us all in resolving conflicts promptly and with grace, fostering peace and unity in our relationships. Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. We pray for those affected by ongoing conflicts around the world. We remember especially the people in Ukraine Parts of Israel and Middle East. Bring comfort to those who mourn, healing to those who are injured, and hope to those who are in despair. Lord, we pray for those who are hungry, both physically and spiritually. May we find ways to provide for their needs and share the message of eternal sustenance. Thank you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for bread of life. Help us to prioritize our spiritual nourishment and to reach out to those who are seeking. Merciful God, we lift up those in our community who are sick, who have health issues, who are lonely, or are in need of special care. Surround them with your love and your peace. We remember those that who are on our hearts, and we take the time of silent prayer.
Number 217, Love Divine or Love Excel, a standard scene and Thank mm-hmm. you.